Sunday because it's like, you know, you have to work yourself up for young adults. So I was praying on Sunday about, I'm kidding. I love y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> oh, I was in the room like playing Rocky music. I wasn't even praying in the Holy Spirit. I was like, <laughs> literally like working myself up. So I'll just look at Kai because he's, he's still kind of high school. I can look at him. You know, Kai and Jaslyn both, oh, familiar faces. Okay, y'all weren't here last time. You know what I mean? Mm-mm, they weren't. And that's fine. I was praying on Sunday. Oh, and Janiah, sorry. And Janiah too. I love you, Janiah. She's awesome. Janiah is good. She's awesome. Okay, so I was praying on Sunday. I didn't lose where I was. I kind of did, but I was praying on Sunday and the Holy Spirit said, just tell them not to be discouraged. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, that's an encouraging message. Don't be discouraged. You know, like, where am I going with that? But don't be discouraged or take courage. That's the title of tonight's message. If you're taking notes, I'm going to be reading um, a few scriptures, a couple of stories from the Bible, and then I'm going to give us an opportunity to kind of allow the Holy Spirit to show us us. I believe that tonight you're going to see things more clear than you've ever seen things before. Things are going to be brought to the surface. Even as I was praying in the Holy Spirit in my office, I wasn't really listening to rocky music. I was praying in the Holy Spirit and I was looking at the floor and I noticed that like, it's kind of in here too, like the squares. Do you see them? Like barely. It's like where the tile used to be. Do y'all see it? It's like everywhere in my office. And I've never noticed it. I've literally never noticed all of the squares. So I'm walking and I'm like, holy moly. Like either the stain didn't set or that was just some really good stuff. But I was just like, the Holy Spirit is gonna show us some stuff that we've never seen. And it might go way, way back when we were four, when we were three, it may go way, way back. And it's like, we suppressed it or we silenced it, but the Holy Spirit wants to bring some stuff to the surface tonight so that you can untie it from your life and you can move forward. Pastor Greg's been talking about the pillars of our life. Well, if I wanna build my life on a solid foundation, I have to have all of those pillars. But a thing called discouragement will keep the cement wet. It will keep you, and you can like pour cement and pour cement and pour cement and feel like, gosh, I, I thought I was, I was moving. I thought I was going places, but discouragement is so subtle. It's like this little tiny rope that's like tied onto your life. It's not big, but it's just enough to keep you from moving forward. It's just like a little too much water. And so it's like you're mixing and you're mixing and you're mixing. And it's like, oh my gosh, why is it not setting? You know, I'm I'm building my life on love. I'm building my life on faith. All those pillars that Pastor Greg's been teaching us about. But it's like, if I have discouragement, if there's um, disappointment in my life or from my past, And it's like the enemy is so subtle. And that's why he does it most of the time whenever we're kids. It could happen later on in life, discouragement from our own mistakes or our own failings, you know, not meeting our own expectations. But as a kid, he just does it so subtly as a kid because as a kid, it's like your brain's not even developed. You don't even know how to handle it, like what's going on. But it's like he suddenly just lays the rope of discouragement there and you tie it around and then it's like it never goes away. And it doesn't go away until you put it away. Because Joshua 1.9 says this, Moses was obviously gonna go into the promised land. And that's what we're endeavoring to do. Each of us in our own lives, there's a promised land that awaits us. There's a life, there's days that are filled with literally milk and honey, just flowing in the goodness of God and the presence of God and the power of God. That is available for us every single day. Each of us have a specific call. Each of us have a specific purpose. Like your life is so valuable. And discouragement will also make you think that like you're not as good as somebody else because you see someone else already building, but really it's just because you haven't dealt with some stuff. It's like you're doing all of the right things, but your cement's just what you got to get rid of discouragement so that it can begin to set and then you can begin to build. And so the enemy is just such a, a loser, loser. But Moses was going to enter into the promised land, right? He took all of the Israelites out of Egypt. He delivered them out. Signs, miracles, like all of these wonders, pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night, fire by night, hey, fire by night. Um, all of these amazing things, right? The sea parting, all of this stuff. Well, but Moses disobeyed God. God specifically told him, speak to the rock. And he was so mad. He was in his fields. He got mad and he hit the rock twice. Well, all of this time, Joshua had been following him. Joshua was his second. And Joshua was excited about entering into the promised land under Moses. 
Joshua had no ambition. He wasn't trying to like be Moses. He wasn't trying to be Aaron. He was just trying to honor God. He knew that God was speaking to Moses. And so he just wanted to fall in line. He wanted to do what he knew to do. And he did. He, he knew what he did, knew to do. He led the, the battle against the Amalekites. He um, went into the Canaan land and said, we are well able, right? He did what he knew he was supposed to do. But then Moses, his leader, messed up. And so immediately discouragement came. Well, how do you know discouragement came for Joshua? Because all throughout Joshua 1, like that's all the Spirit of God kept saying to him. Take courage. Take courage. Do not be afraid. Look what it says in Joshua 1.9. I didn't get there, but I'm going to go there. Go there in your Bibles. You should highlight this verse. Because here's how the enemy works. If he can get you discouraged, then he keeps you out of the promised land. He keeps you out of all that is available to you. There's going to be things that you acquire, things that you step in. Just because, you know, you're a part of this house, there's going to be revelations that you receive, but it's like there's constantly going to be a pullback in your personal life, maybe in your personal finances, in your personal, it's always going to be just like a pullback because of discouragement. And so this is what happened with Joshua. Moses, his leader, messed up. And the enemy used that. Discouragement can come from someone else. Sometimes it can come from ourselves, our own mistakes. We, went, we make a mistake. We know we disappointed people. And so then we tie the rope of discouragement around. Then we're just discouraged. And then we're fearful about doing anything. We're fearful about leading again. We're fearful about doing stuff again, right? Just like we tie it on. But sometimes it's from other people. And Joshua, that's the enemy was endeavoring to get Joshua discouraged with Moses' mistake. Because if he could get Joshua discouraged, then and who's leading the people in? Joshua 1, 1, 9 says this. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. You know, you don't have to tell someone to be strong and of good courage when they're strong and they're of good courage. There was clearly something going on because it wasn't like this same verbiage, verbiage, PK, this same verbiage didn't happen with everybody that was called. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, Noah, God didn't have to say, be strong, be courageous, right? He just said, just build it. And Noah was like, okay. And so he started building it. Like he wasn't discouraged, but Joshua clearly was. And so we have to look and see, okay, Joshua was discouraged. Why? Okay, he was like, awesome. He did these awesome things. Well, the enemy used that failure of Moses to be an opportunity for Joshua to be discouraged, to to lose heart to lose his courage. And so the Spirit of God kept telling him. Moses even told him, go in your Bibles to Numbers. Look in Numbers 27. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Numbers, Numbers, okay. Numbers 27. The Holy Spirit wants to show you where discouragement is tied to you tonight. It could be um, an expectation, you know, of a parent. It could be something a family member did that they shouldn't have done. It could be a friendship. It could be a relationship. You know, you're just discouraged about how a relationship went down. Whatever it is, you can't afford to be discouraged. You can't afford, especially in these last days, it's just like we have to picture ourselves just like Joshua. And I would encourage you to read Joshua, study Joshua. We have to picture ourselves like him today. Like I am looking at the promised land. And what is the promised land? Walking in the fullness of God so a lost and a dying world can be saved. That's our promised land so that people don't have to die and go to hell. So that salvations happen. So that people get plugged into the church. They get discipled and then they're discipling and then they're reaching out, right? So we have to see ourselves like him. So look what it says in Numbers 27, 18. Moses, God was talking to Moses because he was like, God told Moses, you can't go. You messed up. There's consequences for disobedience. So, (laughs) Pastor (laughs) Kathy, thanks, Mom, for being here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man, not N O N E, N U N. She was a nun. Just kidding. Nuns nuns don't have kids. (laughs) Um, The son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thy hand upon him, and set him before. Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight. Now go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 31, 23. Give him a charge. So here's the charge. This is what the Spirit of God told Moses 
to tell him? Why would God need to tell Joshua this charge? Like, why not just go? You've beat the, the Amalekites. You've said you're well able, right? You've been courageous. Just go. You've got this. But he didn't say that. This, is, this was the charge. Deuteronomy 31, 23. He says this, and he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge. Here's, they just kind of repeated themselves. Here's the charge. And said, be strong and of good courage. For thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swore unto you, and I will be with you. Notice what God said. Be strong and take courage. Look what the definition of discouraged is. You can write it down if you're taking notes. Discouraged means having lost confidence or enthusiasm. Disheartened. Having lost confidence or enthusiasm. Why am I still struggling with insecurity? I know the word. I'm here. Some of you, I've been raised in it. Why am I still struggling with insecurity? Why am I still forcing myself to read the Bible? Why am I still forcing myself to come to church? Why am I forcing myself to serve? Why why is there this pullback with this stuff? Well, discouraged. What is that? It's a lack of confidence, enthusiasm, disheartened. Now look at the definition of courageous. Courageous is stout. It's bold. It's alert. Stout, bold, and alert. So God told Joshua, be strong. Be of good courage. Because why? I'm going to be with you. You're going to enter. You can do this, right? Well, the Spirit of God wants to tell you tonight, stop being discouraged. Stop, being dis- stop allowing that, that thing that happened to be tied around you. You are ridiculously in charge of your life. And just like, yes, will you come up? We just tie this around. One end. Well, we got it tied up together. Wow, this is a long one. It's good. It's good, it just keeps going. Okay, (laughs) tied around your waist. Remember, this rope is like discouragement. So we're building our life, right? We're coming to late night. Ooh, we're serving. Ooh, watch me, watch me. Right, we're doing all this stuff. We even take time out of our day, a couple days, to read the word, to talk to God. But it's like, so we try to move forward. Move forward. Not towards me, weirdy. (laughs) Move forward. Forward. We move forward. But it's like there's always, okay, come on. There's always something that pulls back. Go back. Try it again. Try it again. It's my left hand, guys. Keep going. Come on, move forward. And it's like, ah. Gosh, and then guess what happens? When you can't move forward, there's another rope and you tie that around and then you become discouraged again. And then you give in to sin because you're like, "Mm, what's the point? I'm not moving anywhere anyways, right? And like, you don't move, the cement's wet. Well, who's got this tied? Because I don't, I'm just standing here. If Yaz wants to move forward, what does she need to do right now? You tied it super tight too. Well, that's okay. Sometimes, y'all, the knots have been tied since you were a little girl. Gosh, since you were a little boy, they've been tied. And you didn't even know then that you were tying it around. But it's just like that was the automatic response, right? Discouragement, disheartening. You know, whenever your parents aren't there to tell you, like, it's okay, baby. It's all right. We're going to move forward. Like whenever my mom was there, like to tell me when people would leave the church, people would talk bad about them. You might not have had parents that said, it's okay. You're good. You're okay. You're good. You know, whenever you failed the test and you came home and your parents were just like mad at you, you didn't have a parent that said, that's okay. You'll do better next time. Some people didn't have that. And so what happens? It's just like natural. You just become discouraged. And then you live your life and you're, endeav- you're endeavoring to do good. You're endeavoring to do right. You're endeavoring to honor God with your li- life. But there's just this pullback, right? So let's look at a couple of people. Thank you, guys, in the Bible that they've experienced this. I didn't go to the scripture, so I'm just going to tell you. Unless I can look them up really fast. Judas. Let's just talk about Judas. I'm going to get a scripture. I can't afford to be discouraged. The Spirit of God is going to begin to speak to you and show you moments. That moment he touched you. That moment that relationship failed that moment you would put your expectation in something to happen and it didn't happen, the Holy Spirit's gonna show you. He's gonna show you those moments 
And those are the moments that we're going to burn tonight. Those are the moments that we're going to say, okay, I'm done staying tied. Even if you've said, well, I've already, I've already moved past that. Okay, then there must be progress. So you have to say, okay, I thought I moved past that, but there really isn't progress in my life spiritually. There really isn't progress in my life naturally as it pertains to manifesting the things of God. So Holy Spirit, show me what's going on. Because y'all, it's not on his end. Do you know what I mean? It's not on his end. Sorry, I should have got these before instead of praying the Holy Spirit and looking at the floor himself. Matthew 27, this is at the end. This is what the discouragement led to. Matthew 27. See, Joshua had to decide what to do with what just happened. There's going to be stuff that happens. The enemy will use people. He'll use circumstances. Um, he'll even try to get you to give in to sin and compromise so that you can tie discouragement around you, especially if you've been coming to church and you know the word. Gosh, it's just like sin and compromise is almost more detrimental than people in the world. Obviously, the wages of sin is still death, period. But it's like he latches on discouragement, and that discouragement eventually keeps you from coming to church. It keeps you from serving. It keeps you from being a part. And it really, it hijacks the promised land from you. It hijacks your destiny. Just discouragement. When we've been given the blood of Jesus and power over sin, and so the enemy just uses these little things. And what happened to you is probably not little. That moment that you were hurt, it's not little. I'm not saying that moment was little, but I'm saying the discouragement that is still tied to your life, it has little power. All you have to do is untie it and take courage and say, God, from this night on, I'm not gonna allow that thing to keep pulling me back, to keep me discouraged, to keep me disheartened, right? So if I haven't dealt with stuff, I wanna deal with it tonight because he said, take courage. So I want you to even be asking the Holy Spirit, thinking as you're listening to me, listen to him, the moment that first moment where the rope got tied, the first moment, what was the first moment? Were you little? Were you older? You had an expectation of somebody to do this and they didn't do it. And so discouragement was tied. You had an expectation that someone was gonna be there for you and they weren't and discouragement was tied. You have to address those things. Well, I don't wanna think about those things. Okay, well then they're gonna keep thinking about you. They'll keep pulling you back. And so you just say once and for all, I'm gonna address this disappointment. I'm going to address this place where I was disheartened. I'm going to address this place because here's the thing. Look what it says, discouraged, lost confidence. I'm not going to continue to be insecure. Y'all, we can't have insecure believers. I'm not going to continue to be weak. When temptation comes, I'm not going to be weak. Well, where does that come from? Y'all, you're in the Word all the time. Like you hear the Word all the time if you go to this church or you have opportunity to. Like why would we still be weak? Because there's discouragement. There's things that we haven't addressed. And the enemy will keep you there all day, but like it's, it's weak. This rope is weak. Discouragement is weak. And so you have to decide once for all, I'm done being insecure. I'm done being, I'm done being weak. You know, discouragement, what will it do? It'll tell you like, you can't, you can't trust your pastors. Discouragement will tell you, you know, you can't tell them that or they'll think this. Discouragement will tell you that no one will ever understand you. Now, all those lies are discouragement because the Bible even says that you've been placed in a body and you've been, you've been given pastors, you've been given shepherds to watch out for your soul. But if you're tied to discouragement, then you clam up. You don't say what you need to say. You don't bust out what you need to bust out. Why? Because there's discouragement. You've been hurt before. And here's the thing. God didn't tell Joshua, be strong and of good courage because there's gonna be other men and, and women of God around you. He didn't say that. He said, I'm with you. And that's all that matters. I'm with you. Well, what if they fail too? I won't. What if they walk away too? I won't. So you just say, I'm not gonna be discouraged or allow discouragement. Look what Judas did. In Matthew, where was it? What did I tell you? 27, five. This is the end of his story. This is what happens when I allow discouragement. Backstory to this 27, five. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. He took his life, why? Because he was a bad person. No, he wasn't a bad person. He messed up. He isolated himself. But why did he even do that? The moment Jesus called him, Judas was a zealot. Like he thought we we're going we to take over the kingdom by force, right? We're going to get our swords. We're going to do all this stuff. We're going to take over. We're ready to fight. We're ready to do all this stuff. Jesus called him, and that's not how it's going down. Immediate disappointment. 
I thought it was gonna go like this. And what happened? Instead of just saying, okay, that's not how it's going. God, I trust you. I'm here with Jesus. And so however it's gonna go, I'm just in the flow. Hey. hey bars. <laughs> bars. <laughs> So now you're awesome. Oh, but that was pretty good, huh? Okay, so I'm just in the, I'm in the flow. I don't, I don't care. I, yeah, I had that expectation. But I'm not going to allow disappointment and discouragement to be tied to my life. But he did. His expectation wasn't met in following Jesus. Now, was he cared for? Yes. Was he taught? Was he trained? Was he exposed to amazing signs, miracles, and wonders? Yes. But he never really tapped into all that he saw. Why? Because of di discouragement. Well, why am I not getting it? Why are they getting it and I'm not getting it? Because you've got discouragement. You're trying to go, but that thing keeps stopping you. And you're the one that has the rope where it's tied. You might not have known it before, but you know it now. I don't have to live with discouragement. I don't have to cope with being disappointed about my past and thinking, gosh, if I would have just done that, all of that noise, if I would have done this, and if I would have done that, y'all, that's all discouragement. That's all from disappointment, not doing what you know, like all of these thoughts, that's all from discouragement. You can't allow that noise because you can't go back. Okay, who cares what you could have done? Who cares what you should have done at this point? What are you gonna do today? The, the promised land was before them and God said, Moses, go tell him, give him this charge. Be strong, take courage, I'm with you. Give him this charge. Not, you're, you're right there, you can look at the promised land, we're close, you got this. Do it like you did all the other battles before. You've got this, you're in, you're the leader now. No, take courage, why? Because God knew the moment Moses didn't obey, something happened in Joshua. He was like, dang it, why didn't he obey? He's my leader, like he's been, he's seen the finger of God, right? Then all of this frustration, all of this disappointment begins to creep up. And so then jo Joshua, like literally, the rope of discouragement is in his hand. And God says, Moses, go give him this charge. And what did he say? Don't be afraid and take courage. So he dropped it. But Judas, he didn't do it. The moment his expectations weren't met, he was discouraged. He was disappointed and he never dealt with it. Y'all, you have to deal with unrealistic or even unmet expectations. You have to deal with that. Like if you have a friend and expectations weren't met, you can't just be discouraged and walk away. You got to have a conversation. Now, if they walk away from you, then you have to refuse discouragement, take it to the Father and let it go and move forward. But if they're still a part of your world, like you can't just allow expectations that aren't met, even if you feel like, well, you know, that was just ridiculous of me to think that that's okay you want to have a conversation y'all the, the the love between each of us is the sign that God is real to the people out there so if we can't even communicate with each other and talk to each other and deal with things then what are we showing them do you know what we're showing them like I want to say the bs word we're showing them crap we're not even showing them the sincere love of the father why because I had an expectation and then it wasn't met. I tied discouragement. And then instead of just having a conversation, I just held on to discouragement. I held on to disappointment. Then I shut myself off. Well, I'm just not going to have any friends. I'm just not going to be friends with anybody because this is what happens. That's discouragement. Do you understand? That's discouragement. You were created for friendships. Iron sharpens iron. But what does discouragement do? It gets you alone. It gets you isolated. And then it gets you hanging yourself. Why do people kill themselves? because they're tied to discouragement, because they were disappointed this time. News flash, there's gonna be opportunities in your life to be disappointed. Why are we shocked? Oh my gosh, why did that happen? Because people are people. Why do you sometimes do what you do? Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes you're not yielded to the Spirit of God. And so you can't, you can't continue to allow the failings of others or even your own mistake. Like if I have asked God to forgive me and I've forgiven myself and I'm still walking around with discouragement, like tonight you have to say, I'm done with that. I'm done with that. That is weak, but it's, it's strong enough to hold me back. It's so weak that I can just untie it, but it's strong enough that I, if I keep it stayed, it's gonna keep me from the promised land. So Judas was totally expecting this major battle. And what did he get? This dude walking around, <laughs> women washing his feet, okay? <laughs> like with their hair, 
dry, they're dry, they're crying and drying it with their hair, right? Like, and Judas is like, bro. It's like, it's like some of y'all, Trish, with like guns. It's like, get me to the gun range. You know, it's like, that was Judas. He was just like, get me to the range. I just want to shoot something, right? But he sits down and we're like eating bread and fish and people are coming. You know, there was a couple moments, I'm sure he got super excited when the tables were turned. You know, he was like, yeah. And then, you know, he brought it back down and he started healing the sick. So Judas was like in the background, like, you know, like pacing, like full of testosterone, ready to like kill somebody. And it was really just a table and some doves, you know? But he thought we were really getting somewhere. We weren't getting anywhere, Judas, right? Because he wasn't there to overturn a government, right? But he had this expectation. So the whole time, what did that expectation do? He was disappointed, he was discouraged, and that discouragement led him to steal, led him to hide, led him to go behind Jesus' back and betray. Y'all, people don't just betray, do you understand? They're tied to something. That's why if someone betrays you, don't just get mad at them and frustrated. Gosh, I hope that the Holy Spirit reveals to them. They open up their heart to the Holy Spirit to know where they tied to discouragement because people don't just betray. People don't just talk bad about other people. They don't do it. They're tied to something. They're tied to discouragement or they're just completely carnal. But most of the time, if they're a believer, they're tied to discouragement. So Judas had this expectation. What about Peter? Let me look it up. We're going to look at two parts of his story. Let's go to John and see. John 21, but really even before that. What was Peter's expectation at the supper that night? Who can tell me? Pete, what? He wasn't going to. I won't mess up. That was his expectation. I won't mess up. I'm not going to make a mistake. And y'all, we want to get to a point where we're not, right? Like we have power over sin. You don't have to sin. But I don't put my expectation in my own ability. I put my expectation in the power of God, the grace of God that enables me to overcome sin, right? So in John 20, let's look back further, back further. Mm, Jesus is already praying in the garden. Go back. Is it in John, PK? How many? No, not, in, not when he denied him. Hey, everyone can't say it at the same time, kids, church. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what they do every time. And I'm like, hold on one person. And then everyone thinks they're the one person. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, shut up. One of you talk. Where? John 13, 36. He changed to kids' church. He's going to shout it out too. 13. 36. No, I, I will lay down my life for you. Why? Okay, yes, good job. Verse 36. Let's start there. Is that what you said, Miranda? You're awesome. Simon Peter said unto him, so Jesus is talking to his disciples. Simon, what did you say? Oh, yeah, that's the next part. Keep that one, Jaden. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? (laughs) Jesus answered, whither I go, right? Judas was probably really ticked at this point. (laughs) Like, number one, he's not fighting anybody. And number two, he's talking like a freaking fairy. (laughs) Whither thou goest, like Shakespeare. Judas, I think Judas was actually already gone. He was like, I'm done with this. We're already sharing bread. The one whose cup sips after thee. (laughs) We're already feet, drinking each other. You know what I mean? It's just like, he was mad. He was so mad. But it wasn't weird for Jesus. You know what I mean? It was not weird for Jesus. He did not mind. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus said, where I go, you can't follow me now, but you will follow me afterwards. And Peter said unto him, Lord, why can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for your sake. And Jesus answered him and said, you'll lay down your life for my sake? Well, truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto you, the rooster will crow and you will deny me three times. Three times you will deny me. So Peter had this expectation. And even after this, he was still thinking like, no, I'm not. Because then he overcompensated with his expectation in himself. So when all the soldiers came, he pulls out a sword, right? Because Judas isn't around. And so now Peter's like, no, I told him I would die. I'm gonna die. Chops his ear off, right? Like, have you ever held a sword? 
You know what I mean? Like, I think that if I held a sword, I've never held one before. Like, if this was my sword, I'm going like this, or I'm going like this, right? Like, shh, like the Taliban. Oh, Father, help them. The, like, I'm slicing off the head, okay? I'm not going for the ear. Like, what were you actually going for? It's like he was just like, Whoa. and he didn't even get his shoulder. So it's like, it's like what, maybe he had armor, like the big, I don't know. But it's like, it stopped there, you know what I mean? So his ear falls off. So Peter's overcompensating. He had an expectation in himself. And now disappointment already came because Jesus said, you're not gonna do that, right? And instead of just humbling himself and saying, okay, show me what I need to do then. And Jesus could have said, this is what you need to do. I'm gonna be crucified. You just need to hang with the disciples. I'm gonna raise from the dead in three days and then come and see me. We're gonna talk and I'm gonna give you a charge, right? But instead of just being humble, he was already discouraged. There's pride and discouragement. And so, cause you don't wanna be hurt. Like you build walls. You fortify your own life because you've been let down. And so you think, well, I had expectation in that person to hold me up. And when they let you down, you just build walls. And you try to guarantee that you never fall. But guess what? You will. Do you understand? You will. You were not created to fortify your own life. He wants to fortify your life. But you have to say, okay, I was discouraged there. I was disappointed there. You have to have a conversation and then let go of that discouragement. And so Peter, what did he say? You won't do it. Then what did he do, Jaden? What verse is that? It better be right. I'm just kidding. It is right. John 21. So what did Peter do? What did that discouragement do with Peter? 21 verse 3. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple, that was 20. I was like, <laughs> James, like, ah. <laughs> you're right, I'm wrong. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. I go a fishing, right? Bro, you're a disciple. You've already been called out of that, okay? It wasn't just like you're called out of that. Oh, that was just my season and I'm back in the... No, you were actually called out, okay? There was only 12 of you. <laughs> Hello, and now there's only 11 because Judas, right? He's like fighting everybody. Okay, so he, he's called out, but then what happened? Discouragement happened. An un, unmet expectation of, of himself, of what he thought he was capable of. Like, you gotta know where you are. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, you'll keep getting discouraged over and over again because it's like you think you're up here, but you're really like here. And that's okay to be here. Do you understand? Like, it's okay to be here. You just decide, okay, this is where I am. So these are the steps I'm gonna take. Just like Jerry, he was on the ladder. Gaz was saying the other day, and he was like at the top. And it's like, he's already tall, right? Like his legs are long. So he starts going down the ladder, but it's like, bro, there's still like seven rings. And he's like, hmm. <laughs> You know, it's like, poor guy. You know what I mean? He's going to have to eat some figs if the interns know what I'm talking about. Like, figs are really good for, for your balls. Um, so anyways, so it's like, he thought, he thought he was closer. Like, I thought I was closer to the ground than I was. And I wasn't. Do you know what I mean? So now I've got some issues. I bet that hurt. Don't y'all think that hurt? Boys, would that have hurt? Okay, no one's great. Can we get the back table some figs, please? The back table some figs. Figs, figs, figs. Figs are really good for your balls. That's, that's the purpose of that. We learned that in health class. Thank you, Pastor Kathy. She definitely didn't use that verbiage. But we, we did that. So look what happens. He was discouraged, right? An expectation wasn't met. He thought he was farther along than he was. And so what did he do? He just went back. He went back to his old thing. It wasn't even that he turned his back on God, but he turned his back on his call. And y'all, if you're not in the call that God has on your life, like who is? Yeah. Nobody. Like you are called to a very specific purpose and discouragement will keep you from that call every single time. So I'm gonna just read um, a couple verses and then we're gonna write down anything. We're going to give this paper to you. They're going to put them on your table. It says, I lost courage when? We're just going to play a song. We're going to kind of dim the lights. And this is just really between you and the Father. I'm going to pray over you because that's what Moses did. He prayed over him. I believe I wrote it down. Let me look. Because he laid hands on him. Me and Pastor Kathy are going to lay hands on you. Where does it say? She'll give some of your... Th okay. In Numbers. Did I ever, ever read Numbers? Take Joshua, the son of Nun, to the congregation, verse 20, and you shall give some of your authority to him. 
Another translation, lay hands on him. There needs to be a transfer of the anointing that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. So tonight, that's what we're going to do. We're going to give you an opportunity to write down the moments that you tied discouragement or t- discouragement got tied on you because of expectation, your own sin, whatever it was. We're going to identify those moments. We're going to burn that. You're going to grab this little heart just as a token to keep with you. It just says, take courage, right? To remind yourself, like, I'm not tied to that anymore. I'm not tied to that anymore. I'm not going to allow myself to be weak. I'm not going to allow myself to be insecure. I am moving forward. My expectation is in him and him alone. Y'all, he doesn't disappoint. And that's why he told Joshua, be strong and take courage. I will never leave you. All of my expectation is in him. And when your expectation is in him, then it's easier for you to do what you're called to do because you're not dependent on someone else to be something for you, right? This was his leader that failed. And so he had to, he had to make a decision like, okay, because my leader failed, am I going to shut down? And God said, don't. Don't, there's too much ahead of you. There's too much in store for you, right? Psalms 27, 14 says this, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Your heart's gonna be strengthened tonight. There's gonna be a supernatural strength that comes over you, that insecurity, that timidity, just that, that having to work yourself up, it's gonna be gone tonight because discouragement will be gone. And then John 15, John 14, one, I apologize, John 14, one. Let not your heart be troubled. This is Jesus talking. I would put this on a card. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe in me. He can be trusted. Don't be discouraged. He can be trusted. Don't be discouraged. Well, I just, I just thought that, you know, that that was the, supposed to be my friend and they, and they let me down. That's okay. He hasn't left. He's right there. And all you have to do is go to him and say, hey, hey, God. I'm sure you're aware, but this friendship, like this didn't go as, as it planned. Like he kind of, he kind of went south. So God, I'm not going to allow discouragement. I'm going to pray for him. I'm going to pray for her. What do I do now? What are my next orders? But I'm not going to be tied to discouragement. So I'm going to pray. And tonight, did I read John 14, 1? I read, okay, yeah. Don't be discouraged. That's what he said. Don't be discouraged. I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to give you a minute to write down some stuff. And then you're just going to walk outside. There's like a a ground greeter station. The fire pit is out there. Throw your thing in the fire. Take a moment with the Father. And then you can come back in here. And you could just stand up. And me and Pastor Kathy will come around. And we're going to anoint you with oil. And what we're going to say is be strong and take courage. Be strong and take courage. And really determine tonight, I leave here and the rope of discouragement is not tied to me anymore. So Father God, we come before right now, we just thank you for your word. God, we're so grateful for the anointing. We thank you, Father God, that as we get quiet right now, Holy Spirit, you're able to show us the moment where disappointment came. Whether it was when we were little and we've just silenced it, we've tried to cover it, we've tried to hide it. We've been like Peter and overcompensating because of it, our own mistake, whatever it is, whatever moment or moments, discouragement has come. And we realize tonight that we're still tied to that same disappointment. We haven't really moved past that disappointment. God, I thank you that we're able to acknowledge those things, to write those down. If it was our own mistakes, God, we will 1 John 1, 9 those things, confess our sins, receive forgiveness from you, we'll forgive ourselves, We'll repent. We'll turn in the other direction. If it's something, God, that someone else did, God, we will forgive them tonight. We refuse to be discouraged. So Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts right now. Show us exactly what we need to see. Everything we need to see. Because we're cutting the tie with it tonight. So we can enter into the promised land. Day after day after day. In Jesus' name. God, we just thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word that works. God, we commit to be stewards of the word. We commit to be stewards of the anointing of the authority that has been transferred to us. God, we're not just going through the motions here. We want our lives to be all that you've called them to be. And so we choose, we commit tonight to be a steward over what transpired. We will steward what transpired tonight. And we expect our life to look totally different. A week from now, a month from now, a year from now, 
We're going to be walking in the promised land because no longer are we tied to discouragement or disappointment, but God, we're free to be everything you've called us to be, everything you've empowered us to be. God, we're so grateful for your love. We're so grateful for this moment that we had an opportunity to see things the way you see things. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you continue to encourage us. You speak to our hearts and we'll steward everything that you say. In Jesus' name, everyone says, amen.